Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for May the 13th. I'm Jonathan Kingsler. Today's scripture reading is found in 1 Kings chapters 1 to 2 and John chapter 2. The title of my devotional is I Will Be King. And we're looking at 1 Kings 1 verse 5, which says, Now Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. So he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen with 50 men to run before him. Adonijah's self-exaltation says it all. I will be king. According to human standards, he was the natural one to assume the throne. So if we take a look at how he's described, we'll, we'll think maybe, perhaps, well, who would be better than, than Adonijah? First of all, he's the oldest surviving son of David. And we see this in 1 Kings 1 verse 6. His father had never crossed him at any time by asking, why have you done so? And he was also a very handsome man, and he was born after Absalom. And see, so we see the place um, of uh, Adonijah, that he would be next in line after Absalom. He assuredly had convinced himself that this was his birthright. Um, and according to human standards, in terms of birthright as is given to a temporal order even, um, then he would have been the natural one to assume the throne. But we see that God is the one who chooses, and it's not according to a temporal order, but according to his design and his purposes. So we see Adonijah also had the support of Joab and Abiathar the priest. And we see that in verse 7 of 1 Kings 1. He had con conferred with Joab the son of Zer, Uiah, and with Abiathar the priest, and following Adonijah, they helped him. Since two of the most powerful in the, in, people in the kingdom backed him, why wouldn't his plan succeed? And then we also see that he has 50 chariots and horsemen run before him. And he was a very handsome uh, man. And uh, we see that in verse 5 that we read. He, himself, he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen with 50 men to run before him. So in other words, if he acts like a king and looks like a king, he is that much closer to being a king. So if you can get people to accept you as king, you give a public appearance of being a king, then um, why wouldn't you be king? Lastly, his father had never told him no. Now I read this verse it's our part of the verse, verse six. He, his father had never crossed him. Um, and uh, what we see is that this idea that he had never told him no. So Adonijah had assumed that his father would go along with his claim to kingship. Another way of looking at it, he had it disciplined him. Um, and so Adonijah just assumed that he was entitled to this. And who is his father to say no when his father had said yes to everything else in his life? So Adonijah departs from Israel's roots of God selecting a king to appointing himself. And that's a problem that we see in Israel's history. We go back to the books of Judges or the book of Judges. For example, we see that this was uh, Israel's inclination even, that they wanted a king like the, the nations around them. And at certain points, they actually do this. They try to appoint themselves a king and it results in great disaster. Neither Saul nor David sought the kingship, very interestingly, but God anointed them for the role. Israel's kingship was based on humility and submission to God. And we see, for example, in Luke 18, 14, Jesus teaches that he who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Adonijah's actions may be normal in a human kingdom or endeavor, but this is God's people, and he does things differently. And we need to understand this about the kingdom of God, that we don't understand the kingdom of God by the way the, um, the human kingdoms work and the ways of this world. We, we know how God's kingdom works by his revelation, and he reveals it by his word. So God alone appoints. He looks at the heart, not outward appearance. Ambition, position outward appearance or popularity, which are so important for worldly appointment, um, does not give one the right uh, to rule or to reign or even to do anything in the kingdom of God. Rather, these things often serve to make someone arrogant. But in the kingdom of God, they disqualify rather than qualify one for leadership among God's people. 
So how do you discern whether something is your ambition or God's will for your life? For one way, we follow Jesus. We look to him. We model our lives after his life. God did, Jesus did not raise his own life up, but God raised him up. Jesus did not seek a position, but God gave him a position. Jesus laid his life down, and God was the one who raised it up. And that's what we need to do with God. It's not about us. It's about him. Your timing, your way. What you want for my life, not what I want for my life. Are you committed to walking humbly before God? and others. And we see this scripture in Philippians 2, 3 to 5, and this is following in the footsteps of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. The Lord, we often have ambitions that are not your ambitions, and your, we have ways and thoughts that are not your ways and thoughts. So Lord, we want to repent and turn to you. We need you. We need life um, that's only found by humbly submitting ourselves to you. Help us to be like, like Jesus submitting ourselves and we sub, we get the privilege of submitting ourselves to the humble king jesus to following and walking after him knowing that you're with us that you will help us uh, and lord even as we humble ourselves you're the one who will exalt us so the one who trusts in the lord who gives our life to to you will not be disappointed we thank you for these things in your name we pray amen